Ladies, gentlemen, boys and girls, soccer fans of all ages, this is Rocky Marciano Stadium, home of your Brockton Lady Boxers. And today, it's one of those matchups that every year, it's, it's a great matchup every year. It ended in a 1-0 game with West Bridgewater uh, getting the victory last year in this matchup, but Brockton coming back with a vengeance. The Wildcats in their Usually home, now it's their away jerseys because Brockton has decided that they're going to wear the black jerseys at home. The Wildcats with a lot of young players, of course, they are a middle senior high down in West Bridgewater, just to the south of us. So they have a, new, a number of eighth graders on the team and their starting goalkeeper, the one that beat Brockton last year, is only a freshman. Brockton with a couple of returning studs, but the boxer to watch is number nine, Mia Otero, midfielder and striker. She is a senior, and she is, from what Coach Tim Kaprinsky told me, the top goal scorer, and she's expected to put up a lot of goals for Brockton. As I mentioned, West Bridgewater in their away white jerseys, maroon shorts, white trim and maroon numbers Brockton in their brand new black jerseys red trim around the white numbers I'm Mad Dog Matt Nelson high atop the turf here at Rocky Marciano Stadium first time this year for a soccer matchup good to be back see the familiar players like Felix Neves West Bridgewater with opening possession. We are underway in the first half. Number 22 coming up with the takeaway. That is Madison Hendrigan, a senior co-captain, one of the returning players from last year. A cross is going to go wide to the left, and it'll be a goal kick for the Wildcats. You might notice the new football goal posts that are much shorter and a little bit wider than what was here in years past. Part of the ongoing stadium upgrades slash renovations here along with the new uh, floodlights, the new LED floodlights. A little bit of a slow start here. Brockton with a throw in just inside midfield. Hey, let's go. Get that energy up. Let's go. Boxers getting their first win of the season on the road the other night, a four to one victory. They had put up one goal on the year prior to that in more than a few opportunities. Jayla Smith trying to make a defensive stab to keep the boxers on the offensive side of the field. Another boxer thrown on the far side of the field. This is Lena Marion. The lights are on. My question is, if the boxers score a goal, are we going to have the light show? There will be no light show. Hey. 
Goal kick for the Wildcats. A short three minutes into this first half, still scoreless. Now West Bridgewater with an opportunity. If they can get the run going, they do. It's number one who's in on a semi-break. That's Shea O'Neill. Her shot and a goal for the West Bridgewater Wildcats. Shea O'Neill taking it all the way across midfield. And that puts the Wildcats up one to nothing over the Brockton Boxers. Just three and a half minutes into this first half. You saw it developing for the Wildcats, that one little chip pass, and then it was just turn on the Jets, blow past everybody, and put it in the back of the net for Shea O'Neill, the eighth grader. Not even in high school yet, scoring goals. So it's O'Neill unassisted, and now it's Alicia Talkman. Talkman's shot, oh, it hits the top of the goal post and rides the rail all the way out the other side. Soccer ball doing its best Tony Hawk impression, riding the rail. Caleb Murphy missing the header on that one. Now it's Hendrigan to Smith, back to Hendrigan. There's a plethora of Wildcats in the middle of the field, bunching up around the ball, shutting down the boxers, attack, sending it back across midfield. And now that's Olivia Mathelier sending it back to the Brockton goalkeeper. Easily broken up by the Wildcat defense. Ailish Olmstead, the sophomore goalkeeper for the Boxers. Some big shoes to fill back there. Of course, Tori Viola Lothry, four year starter for this Lady Boxers team, graduating prior to this season. Kieran Olmstead, rather, the senior goalkeeper. Good move, a shot is gonna be deflected, but turns into a makeshift cross op opportunity for the boxers. They're sending it back and forth across the box. Now Hendrigan blasts one off of one of the defenders. Jayla Smith keeping the pressure up. Brockton with some good sustained pressure here. But none of their opportunities quite getting to Sophie Roy, the ninth grade goalkeeper for the West Bridgewater Wildcats. This is number nine for the Wildcats, Elizabeth Williams. Now Marion Kitt corral the pass, sent all the way back to number 23, Lara Cardozo, senior defender. This is of course the last year for the super sophomores as we referred to them a couple of seasons ago. They include Jayla Smith, Olivia Shaw, among many others. Kayla Murphy in that group, as well as Megan Ortendahl. And Madison Hendrigan. A couple more names in that list. But they just, a couple of years ago, they just absolutely tore through everything. And they had the Del Pico sisters, Gabriella Del Pico, put up something ridiculous, like 30 goals in the season by herself. And then the very tough situation that we get into when any public school has a player with any semblance of talent 
oh, you can play club for us and we'll get you college scouts and you'll be on the national team and all this other stuff. But you can't play for your high school. And that's exactly what happened to the leader of the super sophomores, Gabriela Del Pico. Remember, it almost happened with Jen Caruso before that. It was not a pretty conversation because her father, Peter, was the athletic director at the time and said, if she doesn't play for public school, she's not playing for club. This one sent into the West Bridgewater bench. It's always one of those closer games. I think we've had a few draws in the last couple of years in this matchup. This one, a high pop-up. Get out of the back, let's go! Easily fielded by Olmsted. Now it's a foot race, Olmstead will run out, pick this one up. Olmstead sending this one in the direction of Jayla Smith. Ten minutes into the first half, it's one nothing Wildcats. The goal scored unassisted by Shea O'Neill, the eighth grader. Brockton yet to get a clean shot on net. Now a swing and a miss for number 11, Danelle Davids. And Brockton sending it out, but it'll be a West Bridgewater throw in deep in boxer territory. Now it's O'Neill sending it back, looking for a one-time shot. A couple of players hit the turf. Madison Moore on the boxer's side of that. Now it's Talkman. Losing balance was number three, Lena Marion, or rather number nine, that's Mia Otero. Now Talkman through the middle to Hendrigan. Hendrigan to the side with some room. Now back for Otero, Otero getting tangled up. She puts a shot on in, a save by Sophie Roy. The best opportunity of the night for the boxers in Mia Otero. Now Lena Marion is going to get in the game, and now it's a foot race. It's the eighth grader again who gets held up by number seven, Jayla Curran-Stewart, a junior defender for Brockton. West Bridgewater with it again. Outside, outside. And this one stabbed in a shot. Oh, what a save by Olmstead. A defensive breakdown by Karin Stewart led to that opportunity for number eight, McKenna O'Neill of the Wildcats. That's Daniel Davids sending it across now. Up for Mio Tiro, who isn't going to be able to get to, to excuse me. Now Talkman 
sending it out off of Grace Winden. And Brockton will have a throw in. Lena Marion and Jada Fernandez into the game. Kayla Murphy. It's Murphy and I believe Otero coming out for Brockton. No, not Otero, that's number six, Jada Fernandez. Goal kick for the Wildcats, 26 and some change left in the first half. Now Hendrigan looking for Talkman. Talkman up for Smith, who's just a foot behind it. West Bridgewater back across midfield. Throwing for the boxers is Connor McCarthy. Can't catch up to it. Now Talkman making a play on it, but West Bridgewater finds the loose ball. Another boxer throwing right at midfield. This is one of those rare Friday night games here at Marciano Stadium. If you've watched the football broadcast, you know, and Talkman loses it in her feet. Can Mio Otero recover and create a scoring opportunity for the boxers? The cross to Hendrigan, and she pops it up back towards the bench. Fernandez still loose in the air. Hendrigan trying to head it downward. And back onto the head of Hendrigan, and West Bridgewater seemingly clears it, but Jayla Smith in the right place at the right time. Pops it ahead looking for Marion on the far side. Does not connect out of play. West Bridgewater throwing. If you've watched the football broadcasts, You'll know that this is what I'm calling a bye week for the Brockton Boxers football team. Catholic Memorial was supposed to be, uh, the Boxers football team was supposed to be at Catholic Memorial this week, but CM right before the season started said, nah, we're all set. We don't want to play the big bad Boxers from Brockton. Dropped them from the schedule, creating a Friday night void for the athletic department here at Brockton High. And because the athletic department lives by the Belichick model of no days off, there's now a Friday night soccer game here at Marciano Stadium. <laughs> there's only one member of the athletic department that was granted the rare day off. Mrs. Savis. Part of the Annunciation Greek Church on Oak Street would like to pass the message, go down to the Greek Fest on Oak Street, get some pasticcio, some spenakopita, some moussaka, some souvlaki, some lukumadas, lukumadas. Lukumada is my personal favorite. That's the meal. You two are coming the same part. As far as dessert. Of course. Give me a big slab of pasticcio any day of the week and I'll be happy. I got to try some of Mrs. Savas' pasticcio. World famous. Greek fest this weekend. Annunciation Greek Church. Open till 11. I believe open till 11 at night. Go down to Oak Street. Live music, dancing tomorrow night. The BCA crew will be there tomorrow night. 
the whole truck. Everybody. Now sent to Marion in the middle, back to soccer action. Marion with some room is gonna lose it. And picking it up is Sophie Roy. Talkman to the middle for Hendrigan. Hendrigan over to Jayla Smith. Smith keeping it on the ground for Marion. West Bridgewater breaks it up. Now it's Davids sending it to the far corner. West Bridgewater able to escape the boxer attack. Not momentarily, Danelle Davids leaving it for Talkman. Now Smith in the middle of the field. Sending it up to nobody in particular. We're halfway through the first half, 20 minutes to go unofficially. One nothing, Wildcats over the boxers. Brockton moving it up and down the sideline. Now it's Davids leaving it behind for Fernandez. Punch out, now it's Shea O'Neill in the foot race again. She's got the only goal of the game. She has it taken off her feet and Brockton clears it into the West Bridgewater bench. Some very hungry camera people standing in front of us that heard us talking about all the Greek food. Looking forward to tomorrow night. All weekend, they're open Sunday too, so by the time this game airs, they will still be open. Mia getting held up. Kaprinsky, Coach Kaprinsky, to the official says, would you look at this? Look at her being held up. Look at her being elbowed and jostled out of play and slowing her up. It's an obvious penalty. The ref standing three feet away did not whistle. I feel like referees around the world have gotten a little bit easier on the whistle after Neymar's performance in the World Cup. Spinning and diving all over the place trying to earn random calls. So ref said, we're not gonna give him that because he could be diving. So we're not gonna give it either way. So the soccer's gotten a little bit more physical, which is not necessarily a bad thing. Madison Hendrigan takes a seat on the bench. I'm sure it'll be a quick breather, she's had a good Offensive impact so far in this game. Talkman able to keep it in. She gets it over to Danielle Davids. Give and go up the near sideline. Now looking for Otero in the middle of the field. Doesn't connect. And WB takes over again. Now the cross for Otero. Marion with an opportunity, it's gonna trickle just wide and out. Goal kick for the Wildcats. West Bridgewater substitution number two, Alicia This is where everything's getting thrown off. Great is the Otero back heel pass looking 
to the middle doesn't connect. Now Brockton in some trouble. It was like six on four for the Wildcats before Brockton finally broke it up. Now Talkman with it at the 30 yard line. Now it's four on four up to four. The boxers going the other way. Talkman trying to communicate with Otero and instead of making the pass, West Bridgewater steps up and takes it away. Now headed very nicely by Jayla Carr and Stewart probably saving another West Bridgewater goal. Wildcats working with a short roster tonight. Only four substitutions on their bench. And no backup goalkeeper for the Wildcats. Leaning heavily on the freshman, Sophie Roy. That's Curran Stewart getting it through to Davids. Now Davids filtering it over to Fernandez. Back to Olmstead and she's going to send it to Davids. David sending it up. It's going to be a foot race, and Lena Marion can't quite catch up with it. The Wildcats take over once again. Perfect weather for soccer here at Marciano Stadium. It is a balmy 68 degrees with some. Wind gusts picking up. Brockton's going to call their timeout here with 14.41 to go in the first half. Coach Kaprinsky not happy with what he sees, and now his senior captain, Jayla Smith, explaining what's going on on the Brockton sideline. Some heavier wind gusts picking up from the west those are going up to about 15 miles an hour at times you can see the end flags in all four corners fluttering away it's one nothing wildcats over the boxers probably could be a few more than that for the young wildcats team Brockton had that rail rider that went all the way across the top of the West Bridgewater crossbar. Back underway, it'll be a Brockton throwing just inside midfield. Madison Moore back in for Brockton. Yeah, either lower or better be aware where she is. Keeping it in bounce nicely was Davids for sending it out 
It was Fernandez, West Bridgewater throwing around the 20 yard line. Thirteen minutes left in the first half, unofficially. Now Marion in a foot race, she's got some good jets. Still fighting for it, and this one is going to be excellently played by the West Bridgewater defender knocked out off of Marion, so it'll be a goal kick. Brockton with an opportunity here. Should they be able to get a shot off? Might have been a handball in there somewhere and a little flick shot is wide right. A lot of talk about commentators the last couple of nights, specifically baseball radio commentators, Joe Castiglione, the WEEI play-by-play, and John Sterling, the Yankees, WFIN play-by-play, swapping booths in the fourth inning of last night's Division clincher. Here's an opportunity for Brockton. Clearing it out are the Wildcats. Sterling and Castiglione swapping boots. And all I can say without being brutally honest is the Yankees fans won that one. We're not talking about baseball. We're talking about commentary. Could be a big night for the Red Sox going for the franchise record in wins tonight against the Cleveland Indians, winning the AL East division in Yankee Stadium last night, which was pretty sweet for them to win on the road in the house that Jeter built. Just north of 10 minutes left here in the first half. It's still one nothing in an action-packed game between West Bridgewater and Brockton. Talkman in for Marion. West Bridgewater sending it out. Coach Kaprinsky was ready to make a very athletic move on the boxer sideline. Thought the better of it. This one deflected wide. Brockton still pressuring. It's Mia Otero on the far hash mark. Filtering it through to Fernandez. She's unable to get a shot off West Bridgewater. Clears it, number 10, Ellie Smith coming away with it.
Brockton with a couple of opportunities in recent moments. And now a whistle against Brockton. The first free kick of the game. Not a lot of communication happening on the field for Brockton. West Bridgewater quite the opposite. Kayla Murphy coming back into the game. She's going to replace Otero. I'm sure it'll be a quick breather for the freshman striker for Brockton. Murphy, the now leader of the, call them the super senior group, about half the roster for Brockton are seniors. But she put up a great season two years ago as a sophomore and then as the season was winding down, got a pretty nasty kick to the head. This one off the top of the goal post again. Now it's Murphy on the far side. Hendrigan and Olivia Shaw going to come in. Jayla Smith coming out for Brockton. But Murphy got a kick to the head in one of the final games of the regular season, right as the boxers were gearing up for the postseason run that saw them beat Plymouth South at Plymouth South. Pretty major concussion that sidelined her for the rest of that season. Now the Wildcats with another opportunity. It's a race to keep it in bounds. Unsuccessful goal kick for the Boxers. Kieran Olmstead. Thankful that the Wildcats didn't lodge another shot at her. Back and forth inside the boxers half of the field. West Bridgewater sending this one back across the Brockton side of midfield. Melanie Tavares Xavier, the junior striker, trying to cause some havoc up front for Brockton. No call as Murphy hits the turf. Handball called on the Wildcats. Free kick for the Boxers. Dangerous position, 15 yard line, about 25 yards out from net. It'll be Hendrigan. And they gotta back that West Bridgewater wall up. The rule is 10 yards, and they were about four yards away from that ball. Now they're saying that's uh, close enough to 10 yards. Hendrigan to take it for the Boxers. Curving it, headed through the football goal post. The kick is up and good for the boxers, heading it too high. I would have tried to chest that one and guide it in, not head it upwards top shelf.
This one picked midair by Sophie Roy. Freshman goalkeeper giving the Wildcats a lot of confidence back there. Now a long shot is gonna go about 10 yards wide to the right. Low goal kick for the Wildcats. Now it's Davids guiding it out of bounds off of one of the Wildcats for a throw in. That's a handball, not called. Now Davids pressuring the defender north of the border here, inside the box. It's Brockton only keeping two back, full steam ahead for the boxer offensive attack. And that could lead to some issues here for the boxers. It's Curran Stewart able to turn around, get it up to Madison Moore. And there'll be a West Bridgewater throw in. First number nine, Elizabeth Williams, number one, Shay O'Neill. Two minutes left in the half, unofficially. Official time is kept on the field by the referees. Will attempt to do my best to gauge, not usually very accurate. Usually within 20 seconds. Feather, that's well done. Feather, well done. An infraction on the Wildcats leads to a box of free kick. I heard the random whistle. Well, why are we blowing it dead already? It certainly hasn't been two minutes. Free kick for the boxers. Get a touch. Win that second one. Straight up again. Murphy spinning, sending it towards the boxer's sideline where Moore pushes it out of bounds off of one of the Wildcats. Boxer throwing. Not much time here, maybe about a minute. You now David's with it. Whiffed on the shot, it ends up turned back the other way and launching was Curran Stewart. Now it's David's again. Now Tavares Xavier can't create an offensive opportunity. Mathelier stepping up. Now it's Talkman on the far side. 30 seconds left in the half. Out of play on the far side off of West Bridgewater. Brockton throwing. Now it's Fernandez up to Hendrigan. Thalia trying to chase it down, West Bridgewater pressuring, and this one will be sent to Kieran Olmstead, the Brockton goalkeeper. Maybe about 10 seconds left in the half. It's the refs looking at their watches. Cannot break up an offensive opportunity, and with the change in possession, that ends the half. It is one to nothing. West Bridgewater over the boxers. The only goal scored by the eighth grader, Shea O'Neill. Wildcats won, boxers nothing. Heading into the second half, we're going to step aside, take a short break, and bring you second half action right after this. Looks like it's done.
Don't let salmonella get funky with your chicken. On average, one in six Americans will get a foodborne illness this year. You can't see these microbes, but they might be there. So learn the right temperature to cook each type of meat. Keep your family safe at foodsafety.gov. Ladies, gentlemen, boys and girls, soccer fans of all ages, welcome back into Marciano Stadium for second half action between the West Bridgewater Wildcats and your Brockton Lady Boxers. Once again, I'm Mad Dog Matt Nelson, bringing you all the action high atop the turf here at Marciano Stadium. It's one to nothing, West Bridgewater on top of Brockton. Not for lack of opportunities, it could have been five to four at this point. The lone goal of this game scored by Shea O'Neill, an eighth grader. And now it's Mia Otero in on a break. Her shot is gonna get past Sophie Roy and in, and we're all tied up. Mia Otero unassisted for the boxers. A short minute and 15 seconds into this second half. The Brockton sideline is fired up. Brockton goals scored in the 38th minute of the second half by number nine, Mia Otero. So it is Otero unassisted. Well, there is an assist somewhere in there. So we'll, we'll try to get the number on that. Now it's Otero again. Trying to send it through to Jayla Smith, who was a step behind it. There you go, Danilo. Keep it though, keep it. Don't let her turn. Brockton tying it up. A few short moments into the second half. Well done, Jada. That's fine. All day. All day. That's fine. Face it again. Organize it. Now it's Kayla Murphy on the far side. She launches a shot, and this one's going to go just Again, wide. Again. Keep them down there. That Roy is getting peppered Maddie, don't get so early in this forward. second half. A lot of no she's there. Jayla, you slide to 19. Jayla, you stay middle. Lotta has three. Takedown called on the boxers, or on the Wildcats, rather. Free kick just outside of the 50 yard line. Now, Talkman on the far side. Chasing it down, keeping it in play, and now across for Smith. Smith with some room. She puts up a shot, and it popped up just a little bit high, and it might have deflected off of one of the West Bridgewater defenders' legs as it made its way up. If this pressure for Brockton keeps up, if I was West Bridgewater, I'd consider calling the timeout. Now 
Now it's Talkman coming away with the steal. She's got some room. Sending it up to Kayla Murphy on the far side. And West Bridgewater clears it out of bounds. Get our shape back now. Get your shape. Keep your shape. Now it's Murphy and Talkman. Talkman sending it all the way into Sophie Roy. Murphy sticks her leg out and gets a piece of it. Now Murphy spinning with it. Murphy launches a shot. It's going to go just wide. Relentless pressure early in the second half for the boxers. Tip off of Brockton out of play. West Bridgewater takes over. On your back, on your back. Double time. You got one coming left shoulder. Left shoulder. Bridgewater with a little bit of offensive pressure. Now it's O'Neill. Lone goal scorer for the Wildcats. Free kick for the Wildcats now. Now Talkman had Mio Otero on a break and Talkman pressured from behind and West Bridgewater able to clear out of immediate danger but not out of the woods yet. Now it's Otero who's not gonna be able to catch up with it. Goal kick for the Wildcats. Talk, uh, Otero rather is going to be called for the illegal push. Face it, they want to play quick. Face it. Oh, oh, move for her. It's David's on the far side. Brockton continuing their high pressure that right offense there. with Danelle. 
stepping up from defense to forward. Now it's Otero trying to launch a shot. Instead, she sends it over to Talkman. Talkman trying to turn the corner, sends one in. And pounded home by number eight. That's Madison Moore, assisted by Alicia Talkman. And the boxers take their first lead of the night at 29 minutes and 45 seconds to go in the second half. Two to one boxers who have their first lead of the night and something that has not happened often this season, but they've only had the lead twice. And they've been in consecutive games. Brockton winning four to one over, I believe, New Bedford. In their last matchup, and now it's two to one over the Wildcats. As Otero face planted. Getting fairly physical here in the second half. It's West Bridgewater trying to slow things up more. Getting it to Murphy now to Smith in the middle. Smith trying to force it through, gets tangled up. And West Bridgewater able to clear it back towards midfield. Brockton with it. Two goals early in this first half, both within 10 minutes of each other. It's Moore and Otero, the two goal scorers for Brockton. Now West Bridgewater with an opportunity, but forcing it out was Mathelier. Goal kick for the boxers. Mathelier taking it. Now Moore trying to find Otero, doesn't connect. The Wildcats swarming the ball. Now Smith trying to find more, doesn't have enough mustard on it to get through. West Bridgewater able to pick the pass off. Get 
That's Natalie Fredrickson for the Wildcats. That bounced off her hand, no call. Now it's O'Neill. Her shot is picked up by Olmstead. Wildcats with it, right around the 50. Trying to get it deeper in Brockton's zone with just under 25 minutes to go. Yeah, 24.04 to be exact. Give or take a few seconds. Now it's more, Roy has it loose. There's a scrum, the ref standing right in front of it. It's going to be a corner kick for the boxers. Mia Otero will take it for the Lady Boxers, their first corner kick of the game. Get a look at what Otero can do from the corner. Spread offense for the boxers. Now they converge on net. Send long, and it's gonna trickle just wide. Mia, that's a great ball. Come and on. it'll be a goal kick. Brockton coming within a couple of feet of a third goal in the second half. So we stand at two to one, boxers on top with 22 and a half, give or take, minutes remaining. A failure to chase this one down. She sends it back with very little spice on it to Olmstead who comes charging out to send it to Moore. Now Moore up to Otero. Otero trying to send it through, and Jayla Smith a step behind it again. The running theme of the night is that Jayla Smith has always been a step go behind right the again. ball. Go right at him again, let's go. That's a good ball, that's fine. Now Talkman unable to keep it in play. West Bridgewater's been in dire straits the entirety of the second half. Handball against Kayla Murphy. Whatever Coach Kaprinsky said to the boxers at halftime, it's working. There's been, according to the Mad Dog research team, which may or may not be correct, there was a, pro a promise of ice cream and chocolate sprinkles. Oh, yeah. And another goal for the boxers. They lead it three to one, 20 minutes to go. Jayla Smith unassisted as it came off of the goalkeeper, Sophie Roy. Looks like we're all going to Dairy Queen after this one. 
Compton goal scored in the 20th minute of the second half by number one, Jayla Smith. On the timeout call on the field by West Bridgewater. West Bridgewater burning their timeout 20 minutes and a little bit of change to go in the second half. Brockton has taken a three to one lead with all three goals coming in this technically third quarter of the game. The first. You're gonna have to run that by me again. One goal, they get the ice cream. Two goals, they get the sprinkles. Three, they get a cone. Four goals, they get the chocolate fudge or caramel sauce or whatever they want. And if they match the boxers men's team in the state title game last year and score five goals in this second half, they get a cherry on top. Of course, I would pass on the ice cream, go down to the Greek festival on Oak Street, get me some lukumadas and uh, Greek pastries. So West Bridgewater forced to burn their timeout halfway through the second half. Three unanswered goals for the Lady Boxers. It's Jayla Smith, Madison Moore, and Mia Otero in no particular order. The lone goal scorer for the Boxers, Shay, uh, for the Wildcats, excuse me, Shay O'Neill. O'Neill has had a couple of opportunities tonight. Astounding to me that an eighth grader has such an impact. And that's the equivalent of like a rookie quarterback playing for the New England Patriots and going 16 and 0. Of course, Sophie Roy last year in eighth grader started the entire season for the Wildcats. Now it's Talkman again, Brockton, relentless pressure. Here in the second half, Talkman taking down, no call. West Bridgewater spinning it back the other way. Ariana Gigantis coming into the game for West Bridgewater. Lena Marion Madison Hendrigan going to come back into the game for Brockton. So they look up to keep this pressure on against the freshman goalkeeper Sophie Roy and the West Bridgewater Wildcats. It's three to one, 18 minutes, 45 seconds to go in the second half. That's O'Neill, touch pass over to Gigantis. Brockton breaking it up again. Mathelier has it now for the boxers. Madison Moore comes out along with that's Jada Fernandez. Brockton going with a little bit more firepower up front. Hendrigan and Marion, two speedy strikers. 
So Moore, one of the three goal scorers for Brockton. Fernandez more of a defensive-minded midfielder. And it'll be a throw-in excellently played on the far side. I believe that's current Stewart. Now, it is Shea O'Neill charging the Brockton goalkeeper. Going tumbling. Now Marion fighting for it, coming away with it. She's got Murphy in the middle of the field. Kayla Murphy thinking about launching a shot, loses possession. West Bridgewater clears it out. Now Hendrigan in the middle of the field looking for Murphy. Marion and Murphy have a miscommunication. Now it's Hendrigan to the far side for Talkman. Trying to get it back to Hendrigan in the middle of the field and this is going to be a corner kick for the Boxers. Just their second such attempt of the game. So it's Otero attempting again. First one trickling just wide. Now from the other side, it looks good. Murphy! No goal is the call. They're going to say that Kayla Murphy pushed off. And it's going to be a free kick for the Wildcats. So Murphy has a goal taken away from her. Now it's O'Neill wreaking havoc for the Wildcats all night. The freshman has some serious wheels. Now Cross looking for O'Neill. Mathelier takes it away. Murphy spinning with it, flicking it ahead for Lennon Marion. It's a foot race. Can Marion win? And it's deflected a few times and taken ultimately by number four. Now Kayla Murphy has it for Brockton. She sends it ahead for her. Mia Otero. Can Mia catch it? No, it's over the end line, and West Bridgewater will have a goal kick. The ref having a word with Mia Otero. She kicked it after the ball was well out of bounds. Olivia Shaw, the Rockton sub. Now Danelle Davids crossing it into the middle looking for Shaw doesn't connect, but Otero is two or three yards too far south of that one. And West Bridgewater able to clear to midfield. Now it's Lara Cardozo. Sending it across for Daniil Davids now up for Talkman and a little bit too far. No, it's still in bounds. Talkman. Now Otero flicking it in. It's off the hand of Sophie Roy. Brockton will have another corner kick. Very athletic play out of nowhere for Mio Otero. Almost had a three goal lead for the boxers. Mia Otero from the far corner. The last attempt from that side was waved off. Kayla Murphy pushed off was the ruling. Another good looking kick and right into the waiting arms of Sophie Roy. There's a couple of bodies laying on the turf. Oh, 
Now Kern Stewart, a physical play on Shea O'Neill and West Bridgewater fans screaming for a call. Not gonna get it. Brockton playing a physical style of play right now. And it is paying off for the Lady Boxers. Now it's Talkman. Her shot is gonna go wide to the right. Twelve-ish minutes to go here in the second half. It's three to one. Brockton with a couple of excellent opportunities on the last pair of corner kicks from the far side. Shea O'Neill now with. 11 and a half ish minutes to go in the second half. Quick substitution, number 10, Ellie Smith coming into the game, a sophomore. This one picked up by Kieran Olmstead. Now it's West Bridgewater ball in the Near side corner, Brockton spinning with it. Jayla Carn Stewart freeing it up for the boxers before the Wildcats take it back. It is Elizabeth Williams. Brockton can enter a little bit of clock management mode here with just under 10 minutes to go. WB keeping it in. Jayla Smith heading it up. She's got one of the three Brockton goals on the night. Now it's Mia Otero sent ahead looking for Talkman on the far side. Just a little bit too far, but Brockton pressuring Talkman, scrapping for it. And Brockton earning the throw in. Favorable bounce for Brockton here. Roy bobbles it, and Otero in front, unable to make a play. Eight minutes to go here in the second half. It's three to one, boxers over the Wildcats. The second half has seen three unanswered scored by the boxers. The first just a short minute and 15 seconds into the start of the half. The second goal coming approximately nine minutes after that. And a late one added by Jayla 
Smith. Brockton starting to figure out who they are as a team. Winning four to one over big three division rival. Now Lena Marion with it. Marion's shot is gonna go a few feet wide, trying to get around Sophie Roy, who is charging out of the net to cut down the angle. Connor McCarthy back into the game. She replaces Stephanie Brodill. So only six seniors on this West Bridgewater team. Very young team. They have more freshmen than they do seniors. Seven freshmen. And three eighth graders. Six seniors on the West Bridgewater roster. Five senior captains. Opportunity for the boxers. Defended well by West Bridgewater. Now Marion spinning with it, trying to create some space as it knocked out of play. Brockton throwing. Marion takes it herself. Now it's Olivia Shaw to Mio Otero. Otero launches one, but into the feet of one of the West Bridgewater players, and a boxer shot from the middle goes just wide to the left. Hendrigan now spinning with it as the sun continues to set. Early game, five o'clock kickoff for this one out of the ordinary. It's a field hockey game immediately following this here at Marciano Stadium. Now it's Shea O'Neill. Loose in front, a shot and a goal for the Wildcats. Number 10 got it, Ellie Smith, the sophomore. Unassisted because Olmstead touched it. Don't say never, it's three to two. Boxers on top of the Wildcats with just north of four minutes to go. And Brockton's going to burn their timeout. So Ellie Smith unassisted joining Shea O'Neill on the West Bridgewater score sheet. The three Brockton goal scorers. Jayla Smith, Madison Moore, and Mia Otero. Again, I'm Mad Dog Matt Nelson bringing you all the action high atop the turf here at Marciano Stadium. First soccer game this year that I've had the pleasure of attending. Seeing new coach Kaprinsky in action. A couple of young bucks for the Wildcats getting on the score sheet in eighth grader Shea O'Neill and a sophomore Ellie Smith. 4.15-ish to go in the second half. Oh, 
Otero and Jayla Smith in to start off the last four minutes and change for the boxers. Madison Moore back into the game. She is one of the three Brockton goal scorers. Madison Hendrigan can't quite reach around Connor McCarthy. Now it's Moore crossing to Otero. Can she get a shot off? No. Now Olivia shot of the far side for Danielle Davids. David's scrapping for it, crosses for Otero, it's loose. Otero's leg was held up by the goalkeeper, Sophie Roy. And it'll be another corner kick, the third from the far side. The first one resulted in a goal that was waved off. The second one right into the awaiting arms of Roy. All of which were kicked by Mia Otero who's in to take this one as well. Looks good, loose, and it's in off of Sophie Roy. It's gonna be Mia Otero unassisted. And that puts Brockton up back by two, four to two with just under three minutes to go here. I don't think the crowd realized that that's a goal. Marciano is silent. So to Mia Otero, unassisted her second goal of the game. Off the corner kick that went through the arms of Sophie Roy. 2.24 to go in the second half. It's four to two boxers. Two minutes to go, official time kept on the field of play by the referees. Do our best to gauge how much time is left. Still a decent amount of time for West Bridgewater to answer. They're down by two in what could turn into the boxers' first win here at Marciano Stadium on the year. And they'll have nine goals on the year. Looking to get into double digits in that category. Now it's more. Now it's Otero again. Can she get a shot off? Otero looking for the hat trick. She launches one, and it's going to go just wide. Lena Marion coming back into the game for Brockton. She replaces Alicia Talkman on the far side. That's Marion fighting for it on the far sideline. Brockton thrown with about a minute left here in the second half, looking for their first home win on the season.
Now it's Hendrigan in the middle of the field. Madison Hendrigan trying to send it up, and it's a foot race. Marion turning on the Jets. Can she get to it? No, West Bridgewater knocks it. Now Marion takes possession, looking for Otero in the middle of the field, just a little bit off the mark. Throwing on the far side, deep in Wildcat territory. Not much time here left at all. Hendrigan with it, flicking it over the top of her head, looking for her own pass. The Wildcats take it now. Daniil Davids looking for Jayla Smith in the middle. Smith spinning with it, launching one, and right into the arms of Sophie Roy, who bobbles it. And we have an injury on the field. I believe that's number 19, Sarah Hardiman, the sophomore for the Wildcats. It's four to two boxers. And with this little stoppage in play, we want to thank our cast and crew for bringing you the sights and sounds from Marciano Stadium down in the truck. Replay, graphics, directing, audio, engineering, extraordinaire. Mike the Postman Simmons, yet another delivery to the viewers of Brockton. On camera, the first half at least, Mr. T-Bone Steak himself, Aaron Tebow. Still looking for a nickname it could be it could be Giannis. It could be the Greek freak. We're working on it. Phil Philippides. And myself, the mad dog Matt Nelson, as the whistles blow and Brockton has its first victory here at Marciano Stadium on the year. Two wins on the season. Back to back. They're on a two game winning streak, beating New Bedford and West Bridgewater. The final score of this one, four to two. Mio Otero with two goals. Jayla Smith and Madison Moore with one each. The two for the Wildcats, Ellie Smith and Shea O'Neill, the eighth grader, potting goals for the Wildcats. Again, the final score for Marciano Stadium, four to two. The Brockton Lady Boxers get their first win here at home against the West Bridgewater Wildcats. They look to continue their season-long winning streak of two games next week. For everyone here at Brockton Community Access, I'm Mad Dog Matt Nelson, and we will see you next game.